So if you remember in the previous video, I was talking about what exactly this action potential was all about. And the action potential is just the rapid change that happens along the cell surface membrane. Just to repeat myself again from the previous video, um, for example, you have the axon over here at the top. And the inside of the axon has a lower charge, lower voltage, and the outside has a higher voltage. That is why the inside is represented as using negative symbols and the outside is using positive symbols. When, for example, part A gets stimulated, what will happen is the part of the axon over there, there'll be, there will be a rapid change in the electrical charge distribution, which means that the inside now has a higher voltage where it becomes positive and the outside is represented with a lower voltage, which is negative. So the charge flips. And what happens then is because the charge changes in one section, it causes the next section to also change and the subsequent section to change as well. So this is what we say. And then the, the rapid change travels along the axon. For example, in this case, it's traveling from A to B. And I also mentioned that once that part where I'm circling, it changes, it doesn't just remain at a higher voltage forever. It will then go back to normal as evidenced in this next diagram. So for this particular lesson, what we are going to be looking at is I'm just going to focus on one part of the axon. Okay, just one section first. We're just going to focus on that particular first section where the inside at the beginning, the inside has a lower voltage, the outside has a higher voltage represented by those symbols, negative inside, positive outside. When A gets stimulated, there's a rapid change where the charge flips, it changes inside positive, outside negative, and then it returns back to normal. We want to talk about what happens in this part right here. Now, to talk about this part here, we first have to talk about the axon structure in further in detail. The axon is part of the cell, so it has a cell surface membrane represented by the phospholipid bilayer. There are two parts. The blue color part represents the inside of the axon, and of course the white part. It's separating the inside and the outside. Now, on the cell surface membrane of the axon, what you have to know here is there are a few transport proteins that are important for the action potentials. Now, the transport proteins over here are as follows. The sodium ion potassium ion pump. Anytime you see the word pump, they are carrying out active transport. Okay. We also have something called voltage-gated sodium ion channels, and we also have voltage-gated potassium ion channels. So, sodium ion channels and potassium ion channels carry out facilitated diffusion, and they're quite specific. So, sodium ion channel can only allow the diffusion of sodium ions. Potassium ion channels can only allow the diffusion of potassium ions, facilitated diffusion, by the way. But the question here is, what does it mean by voltage-gated? Because that's the first time we've seen something like this. And you need to know the meaning of the term voltage gated. Anytime a channel is voltage gated, it just means that the channel proteins can only open and close at specific voltages. Now you might be thinking, oh crap, do I need to know the specific voltages? Yes, you do. But we will talk about it and it's not going to be too difficult, I hope. Now, also the inside of the axon, I just want you to notice that the inside will have some negatively charged proteins. You do not need to know the names of those proteins, but you just need to know that the inside of the axon contains some, you know, uh, negatively charged proteins and such. Um, and the reason for that will be more important, uh, will be clearer later, I swear. Okay, now we have already introduced the transport proteins along the axon. Remember I told you in the previous video as well, before the axon is to send an impulse or to generate an action potential, they need to first make the inside have a lower voltage and the outside have a higher voltage. This is called the potential. I've mentioned this before. Now, so it must generate a potential difference. What does it mean by potential difference? Where the inside has a lower voltage and the outside has a higher voltage represented by those symbols, positive outside and negative inside. So this is what we have to do first. As I'm just showing you, this is how it has to look like inside the axon. The inside of the axon has to be negative, a lower voltage. I'm just repeating myself again. So how does it do this? Okay, this is referred to as something called as the resting membrane potential. The reason why it's called the resting membrane potential is because before the 
axon is to send an impulse, it has to first create that potential difference. What do I mean by potential difference? I just mean the voltage difference, where the inside has a lower voltage, represented by negative, outside has a higher voltage, represented by positive, separated by the cell surface membrane. So the question here is, how do we do that? Okay, and the resting membrane potential, you have to memorize this value. The resting membrane potential is always represented as negative 70 millivolts. It just means that the inside is 70 millivolts lower than outside. We always compare the inside to the outside, not the outside to the inside. That is why we represent the inside in that negative symbol and the outside with the positive symbol. So the question here is, and the one that is important for the exam is as follows. How does the axon create and maintain the resting membrane potential? And for this, even though we have these things called the sodium ion potassium ion pump, uh, sodium ion channels and the potassium ion channels, for this part, we just have to focus on the pump. Okay. Now, as I'm just drawing here, I'm just simplifying your cell surface membrane and remove, you know, I don't want to do the phospholipid bilayer. Now, what I want you to understand is along the axon membrane, the, so there are many sodium ion potassium ion pump. But to make life very simple, we are just going to focus on one. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to represent the sodium ions as orange circles and the potassium ions as green triangles. Okay, so you can see that there are sodium ions and potassium ions distributed inside the axon and outside the axon. Now, the first thing I want you to do is, I don't need you to count it, but I just need you to take my word for it. If you want to, you can count it, by the way. The amount of sodium ion and potassium ion in and out of the axon are the same. Which means to say, in this case, is there any charge difference between the two areas? No. Because the amount of positive ions outside and the amount of positive ions inside are the same. So there is no membrane potential difference at all. So we don't want this. This is not good for us. We Remember, like I said, we want the inside to have a lower charge compared to the outside. So how do we do that? The first thing that happens is ATP provided by the mitochondria inside the axon. I'm not drawing the mitochondria out. The ATP will power the sodium ion potassium ion pump. Remember I told you pump proteins carry out active transport. When this pump receives ATP, they will do active transport. What type of active transport does it do though? I want you to see what happens here. It will actively pump out three sodium ions. Okay, and it will pump in two potassium ions against the concentration gradient. So you might be thinking, okay, fine, what's the big deal? Let's look at it. So let's see, I'm pumping out three sodium ions here, I'm just pushing it out, okay, and I'm also taking in two potassium ions into the axon. I'm going to repeat it again. ATP powers the pump, the pump protein will actively transport out three sodium ions, again, just pushing it out, and pump in two potassium ions. Again, three Sodium ions out, two potassium ions in. Three sodium ions out, two potassium ions in. This is just the fixed thing that happens over here. Okay, so why is this a big deal though? Because now what I want you to see is, I want you to see what happens. I want you to count. I just, just for the sake of counting, I just want you to count the number of positive charges outside or sodium ion outside and potassium ion inside. You notice that there will be 30 sodium ions outside and 20 potassium ions inside. Look at the first part over here. The ion distribution was the same, but now the ion distribution is different, right? Because there are more positive charges outside and less positive charges inside. Therefore, in this case over here, we will see that the voltage inside is lower than the voltage outside. And this is good because you have already created the resting membrane potential, represented by the negative symbols inside and the positive symbols outside. That's it. And also, by the way, I told you that the inside the axon, they have negatively charged proteins. Remember, those negatively charged proteins make it 
they will also make the charge inside become lower or have a lower voltage, thus making the membrane potential become negative 70 millivolts. That is how the resting membrane potential is created. Okay, basically. So to summarize this again, right now, as you can see, there is no charge distribution or there is no charge differences between the inside and the outside right? Zero millivolts. Zero millivolts means to say that the voltage between the inside and outside are the same. But with the help of the sodium ion potassium ion pump, when they receive ATP, they will actively pump out three sodium ions and actively pump in two potassium ions. Thus, the outside gains a net positive charge. Why does the outside gain a net positive charge? Because three goes out, two goes in. So the difference is three minus two, one positive charge outside there's a gain of one positive charge in that case. So in that situation over there, it becomes, um, there will be a charge difference between the two areas. For example, negative 60 millivolts. I'm just putting negative 60 as an, uh, as an example. But with the help of the negatively charged proteins inside, it makes the membrane potential become negative 70 millivolts. So that is how you just have to say. So if a question asks you, how does the resting membrane potential get created? You just have to say, the sodium ion potassium ion pump is used where it actively pumps out three sodium ions and actively pumps into the axon two potassium ions. And also there are negatively charged proteins to make the inside of the axon more negative. This is how you make the resting membrane potential. Now, another one more important thing I just want you to know is when they are creating and maintaining the resting membrane potential, they will also create an ionic gradient. What do I mean by an ionic gradient? Very simple. Compare the sodium ion concentration outside and inside the axon. The outside has a higher sodium ion concentration and the inside has a lower sodium ion concentration. What about potassium ion? It's the opposite. The inside has a higher potassium ion concentration and the outside has a lower potassium ion concentration. Why is this important? This is important for the next part of this video.